Hello and welcome back to a brand new episode. I just realised that I look like a news presenter with my paper. Um, but this episode is quite a special one because I'm going through my allotment plans. Now I'm usually quite late in sharing my plans with you but it's, it's not even February yet. It's like the middle of January so I've been very very organised this year um, and both me and my dad have tried to be as organised as we can because there's going to be lots of garden shows to set up this year we wanted to be as organised and planned as we could be so um, along with our drawing plans and our lists of seeds and things that we want to grow we've gone on to Microsoft Excel and we've made um, like a spreadsheet of all the things we want to grow, all the varieties, the quantities, um, for instance, two rows of carrots or 25 um, plants of sweet corn. We've gone through when they need to be sown, when they need to be planted out um, and when they need to be harvested. So we've done a very thorough and precise spreadsheet of when things need to be done really because what we found with last year was we were we were either late or we were missing the window completely um planting out things you know i planted a lot of my things out late um so they didn't have a time to grow and my dad for instance didn't even get around to planting his potatoes out because we were so busy so we're hoping that with this spreadsheet and with all these plans we're going to be a lot more organized um, and we'll have a lot more of a productive allotment because I really want this year to go well like I want everything to look its best basically um, so yeah we've been busy drawing our plans throughout the whole winter um, I think he's done his I think he did his before mine I've been drawing mine up in Wales um, um, and like usual I've gone a little bit mad <laughs> I use graph paper for most of my um, plans so there's the main layout of the whole allotment but I use graph paper because you can get the measurements exact like that's my allotment you know there's every every two squares is a meter so everything's down you know to scale which is quite handy especially when it comes to um, positioning your rows um, and knowing how far or how many sweet corn plants you need for instance it's really really handy but I've also just been drawing a few plans as well like this one just because the creative side of me came out <laughs> um, and I, I, I like drawing and I like planning my allotments so yeah I've been very busy but what I might do because there's quite a lot to cover here is I'm going to do a video about the vegetable side and the general layout of the allotment um, and then I will post a second video where I will be talking about the flower patch, um, the wildlife patch and all the flowers and herbs that I'm going to be growing. Otherwise this video will probably be like an hour long and obviously I realise that some of you are more interested in the flower part and some of you just want to know about the vegetables you don't want to know about flowers so if I do them in two separate videos then everyone's happy um, and the video won't be too long either um, I might pop the kettle on first actually because my throat's getting a bit sore it's like that time of year when all the coughs and all the flus are out So I hope I don't get a cold. But tea always makes things better. Right, so first let's go on to the main layout of the allotment. Now this doesn't really change much at all. Once you've got your general layout, you're you're going to stick to it most of the time. There will be, you know, general little areas which you tweak in, for instance, um, I've changed the flower patch a little bit and I've um, changed where the strawberries were which is now like an unnamed patch 
Um, I don't know what to call it and I feel like it needs a name because I've given everything else a name. Um, but yeah, there's usually little things you tweak but, but you know, nine times out of ten the overall layout will always stay the same. So my allotment is roughly about 12 metres by 7 metres, um, which isn't that big at all. Um, what the site has done, it's quite a small site and the village is growing. Um, so they split the full length plots into fours. So I've basically got a quarter of what the, the average size plot is. Um, so yeah, it's tiny. <laughs> I think people say, oh, like your plot looks, looks really big. Um, it's, not, it's tiny. Um, so what I like to do is try and make the most out of my space. Um, so there's the entrance with the gate um, and there's going to be an archway there. Hopefully my dad's going to make me an archway this year out of metal because my hazel one broke. So you walk in under the archway. Um, to the left there's three vegetable beds with a three year rotational crop. And those three beds are the roots slash potato bed the legume slash other bed and the brassica bed. Each bed is three metres deep by about 2.5 metres wide, so again, not very big, um, but there's three of those beds. There's also a radish tank at the end of that pathway, and then there's a fruit cage. Now, I'll just quickly go through the fruit cage because that, that doesn't change. Those fruit bushes are there for a long time. <laughs> But inside the fruit cage, there's a row of autumn fruiting raspberries called Autumn Bliss, which always do really, really well. There's two gooseberry bushes called Hinomaki Green. And there are four black currant bushes called Ben Lomond. Now, the only change I'm doing to the fruit cage this year is moving the strawberries over into guttering, which will be placed high in the fruit cage on the longest sides. The only thing you need to remember with with planting strawberries into guttering, it can be done, it has been done successfully, but you just need to remember to water them because they will dry out really quick. So I need to just remind myself all the time to keep them watered. But yeah, the strawberries will be moving into there because obviously they've gone from their old patch now because of my nemesis bindweed. Um, but yeah, so that's the fruit cage. Um, and it's got netting on it. The only thing I need to do is make a door, which needs to be done really. But they're safe from the birds, which is all that matters really. So next to the fruit cage, there's what I call the wildlife patch. Um, and that's mainly made up of the pond. Next to that is the shed um, with a water tank next to it. And I need to attach the guttering to that, but the water tanks nearly fill up because it's been raining so much. And then in that corner is currently the unnamed area, but I'm tempted to call it the allotment care patch um, because it has a manure bin or it's going to have a manure bin, homemade fertilizers and some comfrey in the corner to make my fertilizers with. Then there's the trough and last but not least is the flower patch. Um, and that's the general layout of the allotment. Um, I try and fit a little bit of everything in, into it because it makes me happy. And you know, there are some people who think, oh, you shouldn't have pathways, you shouldn't have a shed, you shouldn't have flowers. Um, but this, you know, is, this is my garden. Like I don't have a garden at home. Like, it's, I mean, it, I have a garden, but it's not my garden. Like I can't do what I want with it. Um, so yeah, this is my little patch and it's my garden and my little haven. So I try and fit in flowers and pretty things and, you know, you, you basically, you've got to grow what you like. And people often ask me, well, I'm really struggling on, on what I should grow and, and I don't know what to grow. And my one advice would be just to grow what you want grow what you like to eat and grow what makes you happy because that's what it's all about basically um my pot's tiny but i i know that i'm never gonna grow enough to live on in that tiny space so you just need to grow what makes you happy um and and for me that's flowers 
and certain vegetables and herbs and things. Uh, so yes, that's the general layout. And what I'll go into next are the three vegetable beds um, and I'll go through what I'm growing in them as well. Um, and I'll also go through the second growing season because that's something that I do um, emphasise on because, because my allotment's so small I need to make the most of every piece of space. So I've got the list of vegetables which I'm growing here. I'm just going to put a tea bag in my cup already because I think the kettle's going to boil any second. absolutely tipping it down outside like my plan today was to come up the allotment um, and to film the planning video and walk around my allotment and show you what's going where but instead I've had to shelter in my shed um, and go through my plans here so I'm sorry it's just me sat in the shed talking through it but um I would have got completely drenched if, if I was standing outside and obviously there's, there's not much to look at on the allotment right now as it is it's a complete mess um, and things need tidying and weeding um, so looking through the plans for the year is a good way to motivate me because I cannot wait for summer to be here and for, well for spring to be here to start right let's go on to the onto the list of vegetables which I'm going to be growing. I won't go through the seed packets like in too much detail but um, I shall just show you. <laughs> I'm quite proud of my seed packet organisation skills. There's not many there. there. I do have the majority of the seeds that I need. I think there's about, there's about 12 seed packets that I do need to buy. Um, but I'm not, I'm not one of those people now that feels like if they go into a garden centre they have to buy seeds. Like I think I've gone through that stage now. Um, but I know how hard it is to go into a garden centre and come out empty handed. Um, but what I'm trying to do, because seed packets can be so, so expensive, um, I'm trying to save my own seed. Um, and it's especially easy with things like beans, um, and things like pumpkins because obviously you know you've got the seeds there quite easily um, but things like carrots you obviously have to let them you know go to seed which isn't always the best thing but yeah seeds can be quite expensive and um, it's an expense that I don't really <laughs> have like to spend on seeds right now um, so we shall go through the root slash potato bed which is a very simple one it only fits in four rows of potatoes um, because like I said they're only three meters by 2.5 meters wide um, you don't fit much in there so the root bed will be entirely potatoes and the variety which I'm growing is called international kidney I've grown this variety since the very beginning and it's always done really well and they taste delicious as well they are the best taste in homegrown potatoes in my opinion you cannot beat um, a nice salad potato in June or July when you're having a barbecue you dig up your own potatoes and you boil them and you serve them lathered in butter um, and with some sprigs of mint in it's just the best way to eat them so yeah the international kidney potatoes are an early salad variety so I'll be buying them beginning of February to chit at home and then I'll plant them out on Good Friday in April and then they should be harvested um, by late July because they're an, they're an early variety. My dad grows all the second earlies and the mains because he's got a bigger allotment. Um, so I just grow the salad variety. Um, and because they're harvested by August, it gives me enough time to put something out in that bed. But I'll go into the second growing season with you a little bit later. I think the kettle's gonna boil in a minute. Sorry if it's really, really noisy. Um, What's next? What bed is next? The legume bed. Now this bed is supposed to be just legumes but I don't eat that many beans and like I said before my dad grows quite a few beans as well. So 
also I'm putting in other things in this bed as well which is perfectly fine to do obviously there's no point growing loads of beans if you're not going to eat them it will just be a complete waste excuse my tea making sorry <laughs> it's actually not that cold today it's just wet and miserable and damp I bought jammy dodges up as well, but I won't eat while I'm talking. <laughs> right, tea is made. I just spilled milk on my sheet now. Oh gosh. Right, I'll get back to it now. The legume bed is going to have sweet corn in there. Now this will be a block of 25 sweet corns it's best to grow your sweet corn in a block because they will help to pollinate each other if you grow them in a in a row then they um, won't self pollinate and you won't get a good crop of sweet corn at all the variety which i'm growing this year is called mini pop and obviously as the name suggests they're miniature sweet corn now me and charles have recently well over the past year we've been We've been buying this little sweet corn and we've, we've been having it with roast dinners and in stir fries and things and we really like it so I thought I'm going to try growing it because I've grown sweet corn before but I've never had such you know a good crop from it um, and I thought I'd just try something a little bit different, a little bit more fun. So I'm going to be growing the mini pop. Up the sweet corn there's going to be some blotty beans and the variety is Lingia di Baraka? I don't know, that sounds like a rude word, but I grow them every year. I'm going to use my um, own um, seed which I collected from them last year, which I did last year as well, and they grew really well. Um, I'm hoping that the sweet corn will grow tall enough to, um, to allow the beans to grow up them, um, but we shall see. Um, also in that same bed there will be some crown prince squash there will also be a tom fox squash and um, pumpkin there will be two courgettes one called black beauty and the other one called parador which is a yellow variety and i grew that last year it was really really good there will be two rows of carrots called romance one row of swiss chard called bright lights and two rows of peas now peas are one of those funny crops i find because you don't get much for the space and like we eat a lot of peas at home and like i said the plot isn't big enough to live off and i know that um so for my peas this year i'm going to grow a sugar snap variety um called spring blush um again it's one of those things we've been eating in stir fries um, and meals like that and they're really delicious you can obviously eat the the pod as well and this variety it says that they grow up to 240 centimeters which is huge like that's so tall so i'm really really looking forward to growing them next is the brassica bed um again this bed I would say it hasn't really changed but I'm growing a few more different varieties but I've decided to just grow one row of everything so there'll be one row of Swede called Tweed I like saying that <laughs> there'll be one row of red cabbage called Ruby Ball one row of curly kale called Scarlet one row of cauliflower called Autumn Giant one row of Brussels sprouts called Brodie and one row of purple sprouting broccoli called claret i grew the purple sprouting broccoli not last year the year before um and it was amazing and i was so sad not to have a brassica bed this year because there's been a pile of weeds on there and nothing's grown on there this year so you know i would be harvesting things now but i'm not so i'm really sad about that Swede is a new one for me to try but Charles really loves Swede so I thought I'd grow him a row of Swede. I'm trying a different variety of red cabbage. Um, curly kale's the same. 
I'm growing a different variety of Brussels sprouts because I've never grown proper Brussels sprouts. I've grown flower sprouts which have done amazingly and I'm a little bit sad not to be growing them this year but I'm giving my dad a chance to grow them this year as, as a little bit of fun. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try and grow some proper Brussels sprouts called Brody. And I'm going to have my first ever grow, growing a cauliflower. Um, something which my dad has struggled growing so don't tell him I told him that. Um, but he struggled growing cauliflower. Um, the past couple of years so I thought I'd give it a go anyway um, on the archway there's going to be the climbing munchkin pumpkins again there's also going to be sweet peas and instead of growing the bolotti beans which I usually grow up there I'll be growing some climbing French beans called cobra um, and they're a variety which I've always grown uh, they've always done really well um, so I thought uh, instead of growing the blotty beans up the archway, I'll swap them for the French beans and grow the blotty beans up the sweet corn. Because if I forget that they're growing there, it doesn't matter because I like the blotty beans dried anyway. Um, so hopefully it's all going to work out nice. <laughs> um, also in the trough, once the tulips come out, there's going to be a butternut squash called Hunter and a gherkin called Corn. Cornicon de Paris. Um, again, I grow both of these in the trough last year. They've done the best ever. Um, and I was so, so proud of them. So hopefully this year will be just as good. I just need to remember to add more fertilizers into the trough um, just to give them that boost and to keep them watered as well. Last but not least is the radish tank. Now, I grow my radishes in, su in succession so there's three rows will fit into the container um, so I've chosen three varieties Scarlet Globe, Viola and French Breakfast so what I do is I sow my first row, wait two weeks, sow the second variety, wait two weeks and then sow the third variety then obviously once you've harvested the first row you can sow some more and so on it's that simple um, but that way you get a continuous crop of radishes and I absolutely adore radishes so the more the merrier really but that's it for what I'm growing this year there is something I call the second growing season and I have another plan for that so I've got what I'm growing in the first year and then I've got what's replacing them in the second year so that's the three vegetable beds there like i said i'm growing the early salad potatoes which will be harvested by july so once they come out that will leave me a whole vegetable bed um, which i'm going to plant more stuff into because i need to make the most of my space and having my second growing season has worked so well in the past so once the potatoes come out, I'll be putting in three rows of leeks called Musselburgh, two rows of kohlrabi called Purple Delicacy, two rows of turnips called Purple Top Milan, and three rows of Swiss chard called Bright Lights. Now the kohlrabi and the turnips will be sown directly once the potatoes are out, but the leeks and the Swiss chard I like to sow at home in the greenhouse about late late May, early June time so that when it comes around to the beginning of August they can go straight out and they've got a nice head start there. Um, so that bed will be full up again for the second growing season. In the next bed obviously the sweet corn, the courgettes and the squash and pumpkins have a slightly longer growing period so nothing will be going obviously where they are. Um, but I'm going to be hopefully harvesting the first two rows of carrots in time to be able to put a second two row of carrots in their place. And then once the peas are harvested, because they'll be going around July, August time, I'll be putting in two rows of more bolotti beans because I just love them. I absolutely obsessed with bolotti beans. I mean, they're so nice dried in, in, in casseroles and soups and things. So that's that bed. But obviously for the brassica bed, they've got the longest growing period and they won't be out in time for anything to go in their place. For instance, the purple sprouting, I won't be getting any harvests from that until, you know, March, April time next year. 
so that's a huge long growing period so that bed will just be kept as it is and I'll be harvesting from them throughout the winter um, and like I said with the tulip trough once the tulips and narcissus and ranunculus um, die down the squash and gherkin will be going in there so I'm trying to make the most of every available space there is um, and that's basically all the vegetables and and well the fruit that I briefly covered um, but like I said it doesn't change much um, but yeah I'm trying a few different things there's a few things there that I do every year and I have been doing for the past four years but like I said you need to grow what you like um, and if it's boring potatoes or boring carrots then so be it you know you need to enjoy what you grow basically um, but it's always fun to throw a few you know extra fun things into there like the mini pot sweet corn which I'm really excited about um, but yeah like I said this year is hopefully going to be more organized um, and I'll have a brassica bed this year hopefully but right now everything needs a good tidy the vegetable beds need a really good weed um, and the big pile of weeds need going as well so I need to get things ready for spring um, and then the plan can really go full steam ahead but I'm so excited for this year I'm very excited but that's about it for the vegetables so what I'm gonna do now is finish this video um, and if you want to um, watch one about flowers um, and about my wildlife patch then head on over to my youtube channel and you'll find the next video uh, all about flowers and things um, but I've probably rambled on for too long I'm gonna enjoy my tea now but hopefully I will see you in the next video so thank you for watching I'm gonna have a jammy dodger as well.